If you take a closer look at Devil's Tower, you will notice it's been stripped of its external bark. Does not compute. Does not compute. For centuries, Aboriginal, African and Native Indians used trees as well as plants to make medicine using bark, branches and leaves to cure all their sicknesses. Things like adjusting their body temperature to cold were essential as clothing wasn't a thing. Native peoples didn't wear clothing because chewing on bark allowed them to survive the winters. It sounds like you're saying tree bark turned them cold blooded. Were native peoples the first lizard shapeshifters? Just as sacred as marijuana is on healing cancers and disease, every plant and tree on earth has the potential to heal the human body. It's true, many plants do have medicinal properties. However, I get the feeling that he is leaning more towards panacea than aspirin with his assertions here. The stars and their corresponding elements are found on the periodic chart. I am the table. This is why certain plants and animals are found in one area of the world and other species are found elsewhere. True, the vast majority of naturally occurring elements found on the periodic table appear to have their origins in stars. I don't get what that has to do with the species location on Earth though. How do these lines of reasoning connect? The environment itself is a natural process through light, sound, vibration and communication which creates an ecosystem. This is known as sonoluminescence, the voices of the heavens. Sonoluminescence is not the voices of the heavens. It's a fascinating reaction that can occur when a bubble reacts with sound energy to create light. Some flat earthers seem to think this explains the stars and planets in the firmament. You know, morons. I have no clue what is trying to be pushed in this video. Topics seem to be switched so quickly it's hard to keep up. I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked. These stars and chemical reactions are also found within the functions of the human body through the firmament that we call our skin. I can't forget that tree. Na, 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 na. I can't forget that tree. When a mother is pregnant carrying her baby, the motion of the skies, the alignment of the stars, the temperature of the moon and the earth and the sun all play a major role in developing the human body and soul. These are known as the 12 tribes of Israel in the Bible. This is why we can't have nice things, Barry! What the fuck is going on here? We've had what? one mention of giant trees in the last three installments of this series. Now the 12 tribes of Israel are actually moon heat that controls fetus growth. You would think trees the size of mountains would be an interesting enough subject, but this new one is just fascinating. Please, do explain. Israel meaning Isis, Ra and El. These are also our 12 zodiac signs or horoscopes. The stars are for signs and seasons. While your parents' DNA play the physical role to a certain extent, it's just like baking a cake. It's a piece of cake to bake a pretty cake. What? It's the way it's hazy. Adding ingredients actually comes from the elements of the stars above. The sun is the furnace and the end result is the firmament, the armor of God. Everything from a laugh, smile or tear has as much chemistry to it as making a coffee. I think this guy takes the expression, bun in the oven, a bit too seriously, Christ. The next time me and the missus plan on baking up a child, we'll check with Saturn and the rest of the Jews up there to make sure the sun's temperature is correct. The process of deoxidization caused by the flood in Genesis created a stone age, a new age of material, like a caveman discovering fire. The people who learned to master the alchemy or the stars ended up writing our history. Enter the Freemasons. No! No! We were so close to talking about giant trees and mountains again. How do you fuck up a series this badly? Show me some goddamn evidence that mountains are once trees. Stay on fucking subject for once. 
Now let's go back to our image of the king lying in the bed with the tree upon it from the red Masonic book. Damn it, damn it, damn it. You already talked about Nebuchadnezzar's dream from the book of Daniel. I already explained that the Bible makes it obvious it's not a story about an actual fucking giant tree. Genesis 4, Cain and Abel. Where did Cain bury Abel? 